Dear brethren and friends, Wakeman here. We are in a spiritual battle. The first narcissist, also known as Lucifer, wants us to take our eyes off our salvation and deliverance in Christ, and to steal us of the gospel. The deceiver, Lucifer, fixes his sights on a godly man named Job, determined to take his focus off God. How does he do it? Through great trials and suffering. We need to be aware of the things that can take the focus off Christ and his work during these critical times. God bless you. Please remember, Jesus Christ is the truth, the way, and the life. The scripture says, but we have not yet seen all things under authority. This society is broken down. We see the brokenness in the schools. We see the breakdown of state governments and everywhere we turn. We see the breakdown of law and order. The writer says, we don't see things in order. There's supposed to be divine order, and in the church of Jesus Christ there is. But we see this fear, and we see this breaking down. And then in verse 9, yeah, we, the church of Jesus Christ, the body of Christ, we see Jesus. We don't have our eyes on the brokenness. We don't have our eyes on the confusion. No, we can't keep our eyes on that. If you keep your eyes on that, brother and sister, you're going to lose the rest. God has given the promise to his church of going through any situation, any trial, no matter how difficult it is. If we would keep our eyes focused on Jesus, his being stoned, and I'm sure he's in drawing his last breaths. And I am convinced that when we have our eyes focused on Jesus in our hardest of times, there will be some kind of manifestation. There will be, the Lord will appear in the spirit he will give a word there was always something of comfort and he turns to the crowd in the very process of being stoned no he was not delivered he died but he said i see jesus sitting on the right hand of the father because he had his eyes focused on the lord you have an example of john on the isle of patmos isolated in a cold stony place and in his hardest moment, isolation, loneliness, the scriptures said Jesus appeared. And when I saw him, I felt his feet. But he laid his right hand upon me saying, fear not, for I'm the first and the last. I am he that lives and was dead. Behold, I live forevermore. Amen. Nothing can touch you, John. And I believe the secret of overcoming now is to see Jesus in everything that happens in our life. We've got to see Jesus in it. If we can't see Christ in it, we cannot overcome. Verse 4, my spirit is overwhelmed within me. My heart in me is desolate. What he's saying in the Hebrew, I feel like my heart is ceasing to beat. Oh, Lord, verse 7, hear me speedily. My spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, lest I be like those that go down into the pit. Come on. Hear me speedily, O Lord. My spirit fails. Hide not your face from me, lest I be like those down into the pit. Lord, David said, I have to see you in this. Don't hide your face. I want to see you. Somehow, I need a manifestation. Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning. He's saying, Lord, tomorrow morning, I want to hear the word of your loving kindness. And I believe he's not speaking about just tomorrow. He's speaking about every tomorrow. That there has to be something of the word of God, of the loving kindness of my father. Something from heaven that God loves me and concerned about me. I want to hear this. I want to hear it. For in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way in which I should walk. Give me direction. Lord, that's what I'm asking. I'm asking, oh Lord, deliver me from my enemies. And here is his challenge to God. Lord, I flee to you to hide me. And folks, the original that says, 
I will veil myself in you. Now you think about it. You see, our faith now can't be based on emotion. Our faith that we're going to need now cannot be boast on just the testimonies of others who've been delivered. It can't be just a shout. We have to have a foundation for the faith that we're going to need. And that this has to be laying hold of God's own claims of who he is. And here's what David is saying. God, here's the base upon which I come to you. Not what I've heard in the past about people. But here's what you told me you are. You said that you are faithful. That you are just. That you are holy. You cannot lie. You said you're long-suffering. You said you're the God of peace. You said you're the God of my strength. Now, I'm coming to you. I'm going to lift my hands to you. I'm going to believe what you said about yourself. Lord God, I've lifted my hands to you. I have trusted you. I have claimed your promises. You are who you said you are. And from now on, from this day on, I'm going to fail myself in you. I'm going to cut myself off from all confidence in my flesh or in people or anyone else. I'm going to throw myself at your mercy, your grace, your power, your glory.